Yeah, looking at a very rare sight, I'm glad to say. An HST that needs assistance. Both power cars have failed. The driver and the guard have conferred on the telephone and agreed their course of action. They've decided in the circumstances to ask for assistance to come from the front. A lot of what now has to be done is standard procedure with any type of train. The driver now has to go forward and place three detonators 300 yards ahead of the train. Meanwhile, the guard must go to the rear of the train and place three detonators 300 yards to the rear. The driver will report to the signalman and agree the method of assistance. There is no need for passing trains to be cautioned, as the work can be done from the cess side. As it's an HST, there's an important difference. The coupling is not standard, and so normal procedures cannot be used. Special draw gear has to be connected, and this is the responsibility of the guard of the failed HST. Just because HST failure is so rare, it is vital to understand and remember exactly what to do. Two complete sets of draw gear are kept in lockers in the luggage compartment at either end of the train. The guard already knows that in this case, assistance will be coming from the front. So he'll use the gear stored at this end of the train. He also knows that as it's coming from the front, assistance will be provided by a locomotive of some kind. And this tells him which drawbar to use. The long bar is for use only when assistance is provided by another HST. When assistance comes from any type of locomotive, the short bar is used. It's an awkward, heavy lump of metal, but at least there's not far to carry it. It's best to place it in the middle of the forefoot. The guard now opens the door in the nose of the HST, which gives access to the train's coupling eye. He secures the door in the raised position with the struts housed just inside the compartment. Be careful to turn over the hinged pins on each strut to lock them in position. Finally, the brake hose and one of the two main reservoir hoses must be freed from their storage clips and pulled to the front. All is then ready for the assisting locomotive when it arrives. Now, we all know trains never break down on a sunny day. They choose times when it's pouring with rain, blowing a gale and pitch dark. Conditions when you need to have everything clear in your mind's eye. So, while we're waiting for the assisting locomotive, let's remind ourselves of the various parts of the HST's coupling gear. On the train itself, at either end is a coupling eye with a round main pin through it, which is secured with a detent pin. The coupling eye has a swivel to make it easier to fit a drawbar. Beyond the main pin is a second pin, the oval pin. Again, it's secured with a detent pin. Removing this allows the coupling bar to be extended to a maximum of 12 inches. You can see the hole through the bar where the oval pin goes. This gives the necessary play to allow the drawbar to be connected. But the train must never be hauled or propelled in this condition. The extension must be pushed fully home and the oval pin replaced. It'll only go right through when the bar is fully home. The nose compartment also houses a single brake pipe controlled by a red handle cock over to the right and two main reservoir pipes. Either one can be used and both are controlled by a single yellow handle cock. Lastly, there's a light just inside the top of the compartment. The switch is alongside. Now let's look at the two draw bars. The longer bar is only used when assistance is provided by another HST. The greater length gives the necessary clearance between the two trains. As it couples two of a kind, 
The linkage at each end is the same. The main pin is removed from the coupling eye on the train and passed vertically through the bar, through the coupling eye and through the bar again. The short bar is used when assistance is provided by any class of locomotive. At one end, it's the same as the longer bar. This is the end that's coupled to the HST. The other end has a long handled pin, which is removed and then passed sideways through the locomotive draw hook on both sides of the draw bar. This end of the draw bar also has a swivel, secured by a round headed pin. This must be removed only if the train is being assisted by a class 08 locomotive. This locomotive has a fixed coupling and the round headed pin is removed to allow some sideways flexibility. If this pin is removed, it must immediately be placed in the draw bar locker in the luggage compartment. Remember to put it back into the draw bar when the job is finished. The assisting locomotive has now reached the point 300 yards from the failed train, where the driver of the HST has been waiting to stop it. As we already know, three detonators have been laid close by at 20 yard intervals. The HST driver accompanies the locomotive from this point to where the guard is waiting for it, just ahead of the HST. The guard stops the locomotive when it's between 6 and 12 feet from the train. He then explains to the driver what he wants to do, which is to move the locomotive slowly forward until its buffers are about 18 inches from the nose of the HST. This is a critical distance. The extension element on the HST's coupling eye gives him a maximum of 12 inches to play with. So if he gets it wrong, the draw bar won't fit and he'll have to reposition the locomotive. This looks right, and the guard must warn the driver that he's going in to couple up. He removes the main pin and the oval pin on the HST, letting them hang loose. And tilts the coupling eye swivel forwards. This makes it easier to fit the draw bar. Fitting the draw bar is not the simplest of operations because of its weight. Take your time and make sure the bar is in line with the centre of the coupling eye. Once the bar is in position, the weight will hold it in place and you can then drop in the main pin. Remember to secure it at once with its detent pin. The other end of the draw bar is now coupled to the locomotive draw hook. The long-headed pin is removed and the HST's telescopic extension pulled out as far as needed to bring the draw bar into line with the draw hook. Pass the pin through the hook and don't forget the detent pin. The oval pin still has to be replaced. The guard places it in its hole, but it can't drop through until the extension bar has been closed up. The guard signals the locomotive slowly forward. This pushes home the extension and the oval pin drops into place through the matching hole in the extension bar. Check that the oval pin is fully home and secure it with its detent pin. The coupling is now secure. If the assisting locomotive was a class 08 with a fixed draw hook, it would now be the time to remove the round headed pin to free the swivel on the draw bar. But as it's not, you leave this pin in position. The guard now couples up the brake and main reservoir pipes and opens their cocks. Remember, the driver of the failed HST must meanwhile isolate the E70 brake pipe pressure control unit in both power cars of the HST. The driver of the assisting locomotive has already moved to the other end of his unit, ready to move off. But first, the guard of the HST must contact him and arrange to do a brake continuity test. 
This must be carried out from the rear power car. When both driver and guard are satisfied, the train can be hauled away. If the train were being propelled by another loco, there would be a speed limit of 40 miles per hour. Drawn forward, it can be hauled at the maximum speed of any vehicle in the formation, providing the line speed allows this. If assistance is provided by another HST, it will normally come from the rear. The assisting HST is conducted in by the guard and stopped a few yards away from the failed train. And both trains are prepared by the guard in the way we've already seen. But additionally, the main and oval pins on both trains are taken out before the coupling operation begins and allowed to hang free. The guard then brings on the assisting HST very slowly until there's about two feet six inches between the noses of the power cars. With the locomotive, he had to be a foot closer than this. But with two HSTs, there's a foot extension available on both coupling eyes and the drawbar itself is longer. Coupling this long bar to each HST in turn follows the same sequence as before. Of course, the coupling at each end of the bar is the same. The main pin has to be inserted vertically through the coupling eye of each train and secured with its detent pin. When carrying out the second coupling, pull the coupling eye slightly towards you, extending its telescopic bar. With the bar extended, it's easier if you slide the end of the draw bar sideways over the coupling eye. If you go in from the front, you'll probably push the extension bar in again. Try to make sure the draw bar is exactly in line with the coupling eye. The main pin will then slide in first time. The oval pins are now placed in their sockets. As both extensions have been pulled out, neither pin can drop fully home. Moving the assisting HST slowly forward will close both extensions and both oval pins will drop. As before, they must be checked and their detent pins inserted. The draw bar is now coupled and the remaining operations follow the same sequence as before. The coupling has been completed successfully. The two trains are ready to move at a maximum speed of 20 miles per hour. But maybe it'll be your turn next. Remember, protect the train at both ends. Ask for passing trains to be cautioned if you're not able to work in the cess. Make sure the oval pins drop into position and the detent pins replaced. The E70 control units on the failed train isolated and a brake test carried out. And your effort will be as successful as this.